You know, I, I actually don't expect that. Um, I think that that assessment would hinge on the assumption that the markets are going to go higher and that those underperformers were going to catch up uh, and or that the reversion would occur, I suppose, from the larger names, the handful of names that are benefiting from social distancing and Fed, and Fed programs to some extent, um, like the FANGs, uh, reverting the other way. To me, this is really a classic bear market bounce. Um, I will admit uh, I am a little bit uh, surprised Surprise that we've seen as much correlation pick up to the upside with the small caps rallying as much as they have today. But a lot of the Russell's rally today, for example, came from small cap banks, which have really been beaten up. So even now, though that move looks really impressive, at the end of the day, uh, it's nowhere near catching up to, to large caps. And, and I would expect that we're very close to petering out here uh, towards the, the peak of a, of a classic bear market bounce. So, so you don't have any of that FOMO that we keep hearing about where, where you know, you just change sentiment because fear of missing out. Well, I think FOMO is driving this, and that's typically what happens when you look at history. Uh, when you get these big sell-offs, you typically will get a 25 to 30 percent bounce off of the low. It happened uh, happened in 08. It happened in uh, happened in 01. Uh, so this would be nothing new for this to be a bear market bounce. And and you know the one difference perhaps this time is just the, the massive amount of stimulus that has come uh, in response to what is also uh, a once in a lifetime sort of event relative to the pandemic. Uh, as well as an accompanied by an oil shock, and as I've been harping on in this show, uh, you know, existing fragility, in my humble opinion, in the underlying economy coming into all of this. Yes, we know you've been cautious for a while, Peter. Take a look at Jim Cramer's COVID index. It's up 7% this week, outperforming the broader market. Leaders in the index this week include Everbridge, Beyond Meat, Livongo Health, and Peloton. Jim created this index to illustrate his point that stock picking is a better strategy than passive investing in this environment. And these are some of the stocks that have been doing well and better during this pandemic. Nancy, how do you feel about stock picking in this environment? I think you're always a fan. Yeah, I definitely am, Sarah. I think, you know, look, this now more than ever, uh, you want to be uh, focused in the higher quality names uh, or the higher beta names, depending on what your objective is. And so we, we've actually seen um, meaningful inflows in our firm that from people who were in ETF models, and I'm not denigrating those, I just think they have a purpose at a time, and now are moving over to us. We, we run a concentrated portfolio of 12 stocks. Hmm. It's dramatically outperformed. I mean, it's one of our strategies. It's dramatically outperformed our already concentrated portfolios of 25 to 30. So good ideas matter in this market. Peter, is gold a good idea in this market? Uh, that's a good question. You you would think that it would be uh, in a market where people should be concerned about risk, but right now I'm I'm not convinced gold has gold has a lot more to run, and that's not because I'm, I'm bullish of equities. Uh, it's actually because uh, I'm I'm concerned about global growth and the use of gold as a way for emerging market central banks in particular to generate liquidity. They tend to accumulate gold in the good times. They tend to sell gold in the bad times. And as we, especially as we look at some Latin American currencies, for example, uh, as emblematic of this, uh, they've been under extreme pressure. And so those central banks tend to sell it, generate dollars to buy their local currencies. So I think that's the dynamic that's actually going to keep lid on gold for a while here.